Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Calvary family. Good morning. Please join in singing with us as we gather. Change my heart, O oh God, number 24. Welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning and happy Father's Day to all dads and those that are granddads and those who are like dads to us. We appreciate you and all the gifts and the love that you bring to our lives um, and we celebrate you on this day. It's great to see you. And we welcome all you who are joining us online and extend that same greeting to dads and granddads and those who are like dads to us out there who are watching today. So we're starting into a new theme, a new season of thinking about God's work in our lives. We're talking about the empire of the Son of God. So it promises to be an interesting summer as we look at what that really is about and what that means for our lives. And it's not a vacation spot, but it is an ever-present reality that we are called to be a part of as disciples of Christ. So our youth are on a beach trip this week. We remember them in prayer. We offer our thoughts um, toward them as they have time of growing compassionate relationships and in just enjoying some getaway from the busyness of their lives together this week. 
and grow together in faith in Christ. So please invite you to remember them. I also want to say thank you to everyone who's been bringing in food for our CCM food drive. If we're not at 218 pounds, we're getting close to 218 pounds. We're collecting that through the end of this week or through next Sunday, um, and um, we'll be taking that over to CCM. Part of our mission statement says that we want to grow compassionate relationships, faith, service, and generosity, those fruit, those four fruits, and you're certainly showing me how you are growing the fruit of generosity by sharing in those gifts. So um, we do remember that there are a lot of hungry people in our community, so um, we want to offer that generosity toward them today. For those who are joining us online, I do remind you to please join us for Holy Communion as we join in that meal once again today where Christ comes into our midst and offers us the healing, reconciling um, love that is to, there for us in Christ each and every time we gather at that table. Gra invite you to grab some bread or wine and juice and join us for that meal today. I invite you now to stand as we begin our worship and turn aside distractions, the busyness of our lives, and focus on worshiping together in Christ this morning. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Let us join in the song to open our hearts.
Let us pray together. O Lord God, we bring bring before before you you the cries cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear God's word. The first reading for this Sunday is from the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now Paul founded the churches in Galatia and after he had left them, some Jewish Christians arrived and murkied up the waters by challenging some of Paul's teachings and practices. This letter is a clear statement that salvation is God's free gift and not something to be earned. Beginning with the 23rd verse. The law controlled us and kept us under its power until the time came when we would have faith. In fact, the law was to be our teacher until Christ came. Then we could have faith and be acceptable to God. But once a person has learned to have faith, there is no more need to have the law as a teacher. All of you are God's children because of your faith in Christ Jesus. And when you were baptized, It was as though you had put on Christ in the same way you put on new clothes. Faith in Christ Jesus is what makes each of you equal with each other, whether you are a Jew or a Greek, a slave or a free person, a man or a woman. So if you belong to Christ, you are now part of Abraham's family, and you will be given what God has promised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel. Our gospel is from the eighth chapter of Luke. Jesus and his disciples sailed across Lake Galilee and came to the shore near the town of Gerasa. As Jesus was getting out of the boat, he was met by a man from this town. The man had demons in him. He'd gone naked for a long time and no longer lived in the house, but in the graveyard. The man saw Jesus and screamed. He knelt down in front of him and shouted, Jesus, Son of God, Most High, what do you want with me? I beg you not to torture me. He said this because Jesus had already told the evil spirit to go out of him. The man had often been attacked by the demon. And even though he had been bound with chains and leg irons and kept under guard, he smashed whatever bound him. Then the demon would force him out into a lonely place. Jesus asked the man, what is your name? He answered, my name is Lots. He said this because there were lots of demons in him. They begged Jesus not to send them to the deep pit where they would be punished. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. So the demon begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and Jesus let them go. Then the demon left the man and went into the pigs. The whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the men taking care of the pigs saw this, they ran to spread the news in the town and on the farms. The people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they also found the man. The demons had gone out of him, and he was sitting there at the feet of Jesus. He had clothes on and was in in his right mind, but the people were terrified. Then all who had seen the man healed told about it. Everyone from Garcia begged Jesus to leave because they were so frightened. When Jesus got into the boat to start back, the man who had been healed begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him off and said, 
Go back home and tell everyone how much God has done for you. And the man went all over town, telling everything that Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. I invite any who would like to come down and talk to me to come on down. Come on down, Blake. Come on down, Lydia. Good to see you this morning. Welcome. And so glad you brought your grandparents with you today. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Have you guys seen this Bible before? No. This is a Bible book. This is a story book that has stories about Jesus in it. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the story today. We, had, we got to hear about a story where there was a really, really sick man healed by Jesus. Do you, have you guys ever been sick? Have you ever had the flu or the cold or anything like that? Have you ever been sick? I know I have. I've had times when I've had to go to the doctor to be healed, right? What about you, Ginger and Mario? Have you guys had to go to the, to the doctor for anything before? Yeah, yeah. So the story that we heard today talks about Jesus who had the power to heal this man who was really sick in his mind, he was sick in his body, and he was so sick that he was moved in, out of town. And so there's a lot of stories about how Jesus wants to heal our lives and to make us whole, that he comes to show us how much God wants to bring us healing and wholeness. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing, that God wants us to know healing in our hearts, that he wants us to know healing in our minds, that he wants us to know healing in our bodies, if we feel sick, if we're hurting and all of that. Isn't that pretty wonderful? Yeah, that's a wonderful message that we have to share, that Jesus came into this world to show us that God wants us to know healing and wholeness in everything. So if you've ever been sick and had a fever and gotten better, that's a really good thing, isn't it? You feel like going out and you feel like going and playing. You feel like doing your job. You feel like going to preschool. You feel like doing those things that you enjoy doing with your family. And that is exactly what God has in mind for us, is that we would be made well, that we would be made new through God's love. And that's true for you guys as well. You know that? Jesus' love is for you. He is there to show you healing, wholeness in life, in your heart, and to where you're sad, to help give you hope and to give you... I know he is, and we're really very sad about that. And Jesus can give us hope even in the midst of that. Let's have a prayer. Jesus, you come in the midst of our broken and wounded and sad lives to heal us and to bring us hope. We pray that for everyone. We ask that for our lives as well. Show us how you do that and help us to share that good news. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And thanks for coming today to church and being with us, okay? Come back anytime. We'd love to see you, all right? Tell your mom I said hi today, okay? So you may not realize it, 
but you already know a whole lot about this theme called empire. Many of you are familiar with the classic Star Wars movies that talk about the empire. There, the evil emperor and all his minions, including the one-of-a-kind Darth Vader, works to bring darkness that will reshape the world into one man's vision of empire. All the newest versions of Star Wars have their own twist on empire. Others of you have played computer games or board games throughout your lives. Some of those games are like the Age of Empires. They give us a taste of what it requires to have an empire, or if you like it, a monopoly. You must have land, you must have food, you must have warriors, you must have trade and be willing to risk everything to get more and more power and more and more control. And of course, there are the great empires of civilization, which include, yes, the Roman Empire, where Jesus lived as a Jew in Israel. Empire is feared. Empire is about having and keeping control and power. Empire has in mind the things of this world. Empire can take our life away, and it's usually built at a very high cost to others. From day to day, we are not separate from empire. We find ourselves surrounded by people trying to create their small version of empire. Think about it for a moment. Who on your street, who in your life is seeking to create their own version of empire? And if we come here today looking at ourselves honestly, you and I get sucked into creating empire for our, ourselves too. In fact, sometimes this happens right here at church. Jesus came into this world to show us a different kind of empire than we see on TV or in the world around us. You probably already know that when Jesus talked about empire, he used the word kingdom. I choose the word empire because I believe that modern listeners know what it means, even if you want to deny it to yourself. Jesus has more to say about the kingdom, God's empire, than anything else except money. That should tell us something. He knew how enticing empire can be. He knew how caught up in this world, its stuff, accumulating it, controlling it. He knew how enticing the ups and downs of empire can be and how it can become a roller coaster for our lives. So he told us to pray for God's empire, God's kingdom to come. He told us to seek God's empire, God's kingdom, above all else. And in doing so, all other things would be ours. He even said in Luke's gospel that his empire, his kingdom, is within us. The empire of God, the empire of the Son of God, is that which we are turning our attention over the next weeks. 
No, it is not a vacation spot. There is a whole lot to God's kingdom, to God's empire. It is hard to pin down because it can't be measured in bank accounts, property, or powerful positions. It can't even be measured by church building, people in the pews, or a church bank account. God's empire is something that is with us, but it's also beyond us. It is here, but it's also yet to come. I hope you noticed the man today filled with a legion of demons. A legion of demons. Because he is the one today that had an encounter with God's empire. It makes sense that God's empire would reveal itself to the sickest, most outcast, most hopeless, and pathetic person imaginable. I hope you understand that he was the most despicable of his community, the most one that represented the least hope because things had been tried on him to help him and he was simply cast out into the wilderness. Again and again, God's empire consistently appears where we don't expect it to be. God's empire works off a set of rules, and it's not the familiar rules of today's empires. This man, in his desperation, was ready. He was ready for the healing and restoration to community, to life, to himself, that Jesus wanted to bring him. If Jesus can heal this man who has been sent away by his own community after all their efforts with him, the rest of us have hope as well. Mark is pretty clear about this man. He has Jesus tell him, You must go back into the community that you were once a part of. You must go back and declare what has happened to you. You must talk about the encounter that you have had. He's to testify to the healing power of God's empire in his very being. He's to show the community a different way at life. Do you have a story of how God and his love in Christ has encountered your life? Can you talk about how God has brought you restoration in relationships? Can you talk about how God has brought you peace of mind? Can you talk about how God's spirit has brought you wholeness in life? I think you can because you're here today. Perhaps you talk about it as God forgiving you or giving you a new beginning through Christ. But please identify that as the way in which God's kingdom, God's empire, the very presence, the very reality of God's love has begun to work in your life. At some point in your life, you may have also said what I said. When that healing 
that power of God in your life became so all-consuming that you were overwhelmed by the amazing generosity and kindness of it. I said something like this as a teenager. I want the rest of my life to be a thank you note back to God for that encounter that I have had with his kingdom. Each of us needs to get in touch in the core of our being with where God's empire, his kingdom of love in Christ, has intersected our lives. It is out of this point that our lives in Christ grow. It is from this point that our faith in God's power, in his movement, in his action, in his ways in the world, develop. It is out of this intersection that we have a story to tell the world that matters. It is out of this encounter that we as the church must return to. It's a place that we need to return to as the church when we wonder how to be the church in any day, in any generation. We're to be about healing, restoring, and calling people to their fullest life in Jesus Christ. Our communities depend on it, just as that community depended upon that healed man in Jesus' day to come to them and to testify of what God had done in his life. Today, our communities depend upon it. Our families, our friends, our co-workers, our world depends upon our willingness to be about showing and telling the story of God's empire. Our communities depend upon us not just duplicating the fear-filled, power-hungry, controlling empires of this world, but they need us to show the face, the likeness of our Creator, who out of self-giving love sent his only son to restore us, to heal us, and all people to God's family. Amen. blessings we pray for peace comfort for family protection while we sleep we pray for healing for prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering and all the while you hear each spoken need yet we love us way too much to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise we 
invite you to stand. Somewhere along the way, we had an encounter with God's living word, Jesus Christ, and our faith began to grow. And today we respond to that faith using the three questions of baptism. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in the Hol Jesus Christ? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I invite you to respond to those today as I ask them, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. See how you can answer that without having to even look at it there? Because some of it wasn't even there today. So you were able to say it. Very good. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with disciples who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, you hear the cries of the earth. 
Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, or hungry. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. Extend your healing hand to all who are recovering from surgery, especially Aaron Harbaugh, and all who are facing chronic health conditions, especially Tina Garner and Scarlet Cancro. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here for this time of worship, to be in your presence, to remember again of this kingdom, this empire that we are a part of as your children. Open our eyes to see it in our lives. Open our eyes of faith to know in, in faith that you are with us each and every moment and know in faith that you are moving out in the world and that indeed your promises will be realized. We pray, O oh God, this day for those who need, an ex need to experience your healing, restorative power of kingdom, for those who feel burdened and weighed down, we pray that we might find a way to help lift them up and that they may know of your grace. For those whose lives have been so broken apart by the things of this world that there seems to be no mending, we cry out to you for healing and for hope. And we ask that you would continue to Encourage within our lives a faith and a trust in the work that you can do. We pray for our youth this week as they are at the beach. May they catch a glimpse of your kingdom and its power. As we gather in places together for study and learning and prayer and worship and service, help our faith and trust in your healing and restorative work to grow that we might continue to show your face out in the world to others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. Jesus came among his disciples and offered peace. He offers us that same peace today, the peace of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
invite you now to join me in the offertory prayer. Let's pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful, a plentiful harvest. harvest. As we As feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. We come to our Lord's table today with great thanksgiving. We are so grateful for all that God has done, is doing, and promises yet to do through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Let us join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. And today, perhaps more than any other, as we hear of Christ's desire to bring us healing, that promise is so true in the bread and wine that comes inside of us as the very presence to provide forgiveness, healing, and new life in our lives. May we know that healing, restorative power today. And for those of you who join us online, may that same thing be true for you, for this is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and given for you. Amen. The season of summer is a time of abundant life. The world is exploding with every color in the flowers, trees, and the fruits that grow in our gardens. The creatures of our world can be heard and seen in their brilliance. In the church, we've entered the season of Pentecost. It's not a coincidence that this time of year points us to the vibrancy and growth of our faith lives and the growth of God's kingdom or empire in the world. How do you nurture the plants in your yard or home? Do you look at each one and give it exactly what it needs? You probably planted some of them where they would get more sun. Others you keep an eye on and give more water because of their need. If you aren't good at nurturing plants, you may be good at nurturing people like your children, family members who need care, or those that you serve in your jobs or volunteer work. We nurture others when we share just the right expression.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and show you the path to life this day and always.